Mr. the CEO of Vulcan Augmentix from Singapore. Uh, okay. Uh, one small issue there. We're not from Singapore. We're from Vietnam. Sorry about that. That's, that's okay. I'm very proud to be from either one, but happy to be Vietnamese. Um, so, hello. Uh, my name is Rafael Masters. I'm the founder and CEO of Vulcan Augmentix. Uh, we believe in making disabilities into superpowers and into turning body-mounted technology into something that is as intuitive and responsive as a second skin. So over the next few decades, you are going to see more and more technology that we are mounting onto our body and using in more effective ways, AR, VR, exoskeletons. But there are a bunch of people who are already doing this every day or need to do this every day and who are not provided with that opportunity. And that is amputees. So across the developing world, there are 38 million amputees who do not have access to care. There is nothing available for them. That's 38 million people who are uh, valuable workers who cannot enter the workforce. They suffer from social stigma. They uh, create costs for their family who will often have to stay home and take care of them. Um, one of the reasons for this is that they are trapped in a vicious circle. To have a really good prosthetic that will help you do a job, you need money. To get money, you need a job. To have a job, you need a prosthetic. People are stuck. So we decided to break this cycle by designing a completely new type of prosthetic. So this is what we have come up with. Uh, it is a modular prosthetic. It is, this means that we can standardize it in terms of sizing. It means that we can mass manufacture. And it also means that we can do remote distribution. So instead of them coming to the center, anytime they have a problem with a piece of their prosthetic, just take it off, let us know, we mail them a new one, they click it on, off they go. So we've already taken days and days out of the time to fix a simple product. The other thing that this uh, lets us do is design specialist modules to help people get into the workforce. So uh, the one of the problems with being an amputee is there are many jobs that you cannot do and in developing countries where you're talking low income and a low level of education these are entry level physical jobs the main example I go to is being a waiter so if you want to be a waiter and you have a prosthetic hand I can give you a hundred thousand dollar prosthetic hand from B Bionics an amazing piece of technology and you still can't do the job you have to balance a tray on your plastic hand and pick things up can't do or you have to balance it on your organic hand and pick up wet, messy plates with your prosthetic. Again, not a practical option. So by making the product modular, we can design specialist attachments to help get users back into work. So for the waiter, we've designed an attachment that lets them just click on the tray and now it's firmly mounted and they can go in and do that job instantly. For controls, we use buttons in your toes. Electrosensors are expensive, difficult, they don't work in uh, hotter nations where you've got people who are sweaty and it's electro currents. So we put buttons in the toes, connected with Bluetooth, and nobody can tell. It's full control. Oh wow, typhoon outside. Lovely. So this also means that over time, once they've got the basic product and they're in their job and they're working, they can come back and replace it piece by piece by piece. So they get to defray costs and they get, we get stable income and a lifetime relationship with this user. So this is one of the examples of job-oriented modules. We're rolling this out now with the coffee house. They are one of the largest coffee chains in Vietnam. And as you can see, it's fairly simple design. Just put the tray on, magnetize it, off you go. You can now do that job. It's a 20 second upgrade that costs less than $50 and now they can work. So there's uh, the user journey for this. We sell direct to users for a retail of $1,000. But for many who cannot afford that, we provide other options and sponsorships. We have our own foundation called Uplift, where people can donate and we just put arms on people and, and get them out the door and into work. We also work with local companies. They, as part of their CSR budget, will provide us funding to create new modules. We get the amputees, put them on them, put them into the workforce. The companies now have a loyal, dedicated workforce. We have users who have income and will continue to come back to us for their whole life. So there's an entire ecosystem around. Later on, we're going to use Fab Labs for remote distribution uh, and also sell direct to clinics and hospitals. Uh, at the
moment we are in phase one, which is starting with arms and working with private clinics and hospitals and CSR campaigns. In uh, the next few years, we're going to expand the distribution channels to enter other countries, broaden our product range to include legs, and uh, we are essentially going to develop a lot more modules to get people into work. And from 2022, we digitize, take all the data from sensors, and we start looking at other technologies that we can create and add to with uh, the data we get from these people. So AR, VR, exoskeletons. And my time is about up. Uh, so yeah, we have some traction. We've got uh, orders for 30 units. We've got four people fitted. We have a UX tester who works with us full time to develop the product. Um, in terms of our team, we have a very diverse, strong uh, team. We've got experts in prosthetics. We have experts in mechanical engineering, electronics engineering. Um, we have the people to make it happen. That is it. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn more into the ask, but no time.